Hi everybody, this is Gosha. I am Cosmic Agency. Today's video is about why is it that we are communicating with them through uh, writing, through the internet, through the typewriting. Um, this is something that many of you who have been watching my channel for a very long time already understand. However, I came across this uh, conversation between Aneka, Zvaru and Robert that I never shared on the English channel and I think it's quite interesting even for those of you who know already the answer to this question and also because there are a lot of new people always coming in and I see in the comments they're asking how do you communicate, how do you do that exactly and why writing? Why typewriting? Why not video call? Why not seeing them in person? Why not getting some sort of a proof? Well, in this video, you will find some answers to this question. And then I'm going to see you at the end for some final comments. And now before I let you with the video, um, just for the newcomers, we are communicating with them. Well, not right now, because actually we are on the break for a few months. But for the last five years, uh, for the last four and a half years, more or less there, it's been almost daily by writing. It's not Facebook, it's not emails, it's not WhatsApp, it's direct online uh, live chatting. Just like before we had MSN chatting, uh, now we are using a different platform, but it's live chatting. Anyway, see you at the end of this video. Originally in Spanish, between 2019 and 2020. Annika, why the keyboard? Many ask this question. And why are you limited this way and all of that? People think you type with your mind on some holographic screen. They watch a lot of Tom Cruise movies. They see that and they think that everything is just like that. Minority Report, yes. Yes, we do that, but with a holographic system. Digital and holographic ones don't mix. If you connect them, they saturate the digital to the point of collapse. And because it's by design, we are supposed to be known to be much stronger mentally and can be invasive and even unfair. Typing keeps us on equal terms. And even when you talk and we type, then you have the advantage. If it were not so, we might unintentionally have a mental hold on you. Too strong. It is happening as it is. The same goes for the weapons of the Hajmalim. They have to have human weapons. So they don't lose any, among other reasons why, and to be on equal terms. That's right. And because if we use direct means, we would give too much evidence, and you don't want that on many levels. For example, if you could see me, you would understand that I'm on a ship right away. If it were video conferencing, or even if I were to speak, I would have too much influence in general. This is when I'm realizing the volume of information I have to pass to you and Gosha with just the keyboard. Wow. They are supposed to limit us to the keyboard to limit the speed of data transmission. That's on purpose. Or we could overload people, so they say. Why do we use this means to communicate and not in person? In the case of the Umites, it was done through letters. Don't you think that it would be better in person? If the interaction were face to face, it would be a definite proof with all the problems that it confers. And even if I were to pass for a human, I would be the one putting myself at risk as the controllers wish to capture people like me. 
the least invasive and circumstance matching method is this, writing, by keyboard. My direct face-to-face -face presence may also be too much for the average human nervous system. That's why, as Naishara says, we are limited to the keyboard. But the truth is that these computers are highly toxic to us here, being that it is impractical to try to interwine Taigeta computer technology with the primitive devices of Earth. Comparable to the average person using an Earth computer, having to pass several large encyclopedias to another population or culture using only a telegraph. The truth is, whether I like it or not, these are the rules of contact, strictly by keyboard only. I don't make the rules. This comes from even higher up than the command and control crew of the ship. They are Federation directives, and they are there for a reason. I personally don't agree because they generalize too much. It shouldn't be that way with everybody, but it is. And this is what we have for better or worse. I'm just thankful that I can type very fast, but I personally don't agree with these contact rules. And if it were your decision, how would you approach humans? How would the contact be? Directly by going down with the ships or... Maybe you mean the video connection. I understand well why these restrictions are in place, and I partially accept that they are logical. But what I would change would be to be able to approach a small controlled group of people who are already more than ready for more direct contact. While it is not yet possible to stand face to face, perhaps, but with the use of full video calls, image and sound. This would be the next step to continue with the already cancelled first contact program. Already cancelled, but continuing on a small scale. Because at this moment, there are less than 20 people from Taigeta that could actually converse or chat with someone from Earth, being that the actual contact group can be counted on the fingers of one hand. I am mostly referring to video connection, Going down is dangerous for us. I am referring to removing or dispelling stereotypes about Pleiadians. That they are androgynous. That they are all white-haired. That they are etheric energy, all new age. That concept has done a lot of damage because it impacts credibility. While the term Pleiadians is an extensive one, and there are many races, I can only speak from my own. We are different, yes, but we are physical, we are biology. We are tall, short, long dark hair, light. I mean, we are people, just more people. I use a keyboard because I have fingers. The keyboard is plastic, like yours. But this changes the whole concept of ETs that you may have. The concept of more humanity. And this, at the same time, attacks the Darwinism that plugs the Earth, which, while it serves to filter out some individuals stronger than others within a species, cannot generate a new species from a previous one. This sounds like creationism. The humans can only see two options, science or creationism, and do not understand a third option. A more complicated option that has to do with the creative or manifestation intention of every consciousness that intentionally desires to enter into a physical world for the experience that this would give them. So, one thing leads to another. Your clearing up old misconceptions about Pleiadians carries a consequence. You seem very human, yes. Because we are the same species. 
That's why our photos are used as means to attack us. Yes, we differ in genetics, but we are of the same Lyrian branch. That's why we say we are more people, not angelic light beings. There is more humanity outside of Earth, much more. But people do not accept it, because they have been under the mental control of Darwinism that was imposed by the Cabal. Charles Darwin was a 33rd degree Freemason. To control the other naturalists of the 19th century. It's just that, as you see, it's a touchy subject because of what I'm explaining. As Arneka says, there is no ET, more ET, more difficult to understand and accept as real than the one that looks like you in the mirror. But that is also precisely why it is up to us to have direct contact and not to the Dieslin Tiplex, Arcturians, for example. Humanity was not born on Earth. Far from it. We do differ inside, genetically. There are differences. But others, like the Centauri, who are 100% like humans, are only more humans. Okay, I hope you found this video quite interesting, especially those of you who are new to the channel and who are asking this question, how do you communicate and why do you communicate through writing? Well, first of all, this is federation rule. This is one of the federation rules to, to limit the communication and the transmission of data, that was interesting, uh, to writing. Because this way, as they imagined, the transmission of data will be less and they will not be able to transfer and transmit to and broadcast such a large amount of information, which actually turned out not to be true. And that is uh, thanks to the team up there, well, to the main girls who have spent, and boys, who have spent many, 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 many hours, uh, many times daily on transmitting this. Um, and well, and thanks to us <laughs> for being receiving uh, and open to this contact. It also has to be mentioned that apart from writing, we also had audio with them a few times. Well, actually, we speak and they can hear us uh, and they respond back in writing. But a few times it happened that we did hear their voice. We heard Dorkalel a few years ago, pilot, and then we heard Yaski a few times as well, even though her voice was a little bit distorted uh, because it's still not allowed to be sending uh, audio transmissions. So she had to apply certain filters. Still, we could hear her. We could hear her laugh and smile and pause and talk and uh, sense her energy. The interesting thing here that was mentioned that I actually never mentioned in my videos when people ask me why is it done this way is that they want to be on equal terms in order not to overload the person. I can even tell you that even writing, even by writing and receiving their answers, and communicating with them in writing, even that sometimes is, is overloading too much because there's so much information and there's so much con so many concepts and such metaphysical and mind expanding concepts. So uh, the idea here is that if you were standing in front of them and hearing them, uh, that could be uh, quite a lot to the human mentality in the human brain. So us both typing back and forth uh, equalizes the terms of the communication. Now, something interesting here in this conversation that you could see was that Aneka actually doesn't agree with these terms of contact imposed by the Federation. She is ready and she, she was ready and she wanted to communicate with, with a group of people who were open to the contact and more than ready for such a communication uh, for quite some time actually in the beginning of our contact experience when Zvaru was still around actually we, we did have some groups here and there I was introducing them to the to the people so they were still open to that and it's interesting to see that Aneka says that she would like more she would like to be able to do conferences video and audio 
uh, and that she doesn't agree with those Federation rules, even though she understands that some of them must be there in place. Now, and this is something super important. This is a very important point uh, of why this is done in writing and no more, let's call it proof, even though I wouldn't regard that as proof either, uh, no more proof can be given like video conference or um, something in that effect, to that effect. Why? Because it is a security violation for us. It would actually put us in danger because giving an evidence, proof of sort, uh, in this way would leave no room for incredibility. What actually protects us here is that there is no specific proof. So there is still an open window um, for, you know, making this contact look incredible, not real. And that is actually what protects us. And that is what keeps this contact safe. More, giving more at this point would be too much and would endanger us and this whole project. Now, some people say and some people ask, why don't you show us how you chat? Why don't you ever show us uh, how you are typing and then responding? Well, actually, I never even thought of that because in my mind, that was never really a proof of anything. I'm just assuming that everybody is believing what I'm saying, that I'm having these conversations and Robert with them. Uh, because even if I showed how we are typing and how they are responding back, I mean, how do, they, how do you know I didn't set this up? I mean, if I was here to lie to the people, then I would, how, how do you know I wouldn't just ask a neighbor or someone sitting next to me on the couch with the, with the computer responding? How would you know that's, that's them? So that's why I never even occurred to me to show that because what does it really prove? But, but, and this is interesting point here, if you are interested um, in that, there was actually a person in the Spanish channel a YouTuber, an investigator, um, a young guy in Spain years ago that actually had one or two, I don't remember, chat. Uh, I think it was with Varu uh, or with Yaski. I don't remember. The dates are becoming blurry <laughs> at this point to me. And he recorded it. Not only did he record it, but he made the whole like a, like a documentary about this contact. He interviewed Robert and he's presenting in his video and I'm going to link you with the video in the description box below this video. It's in Spanish, but you can still see it. And he's showing actually a part of his conversation with Zvaru. I'm going to tell you exactly what minute of the video uh, that is so you can actually see it in actually in action, he documented it. Now, if I was even to show you not only that, but the video conference, forget the audio, video conference uh, with them, some kind of a video chat with them. I mean, what does that prove? I believe in my mind that nothing we would ever show would be a proof of anything. How do you know, because they are people, they look like people, how do you know it's really extraterrestrials? Even if you see spaceship and stars and planets or whatever behind them, uh, how do you know it's not a Photoshop? How do you know it's not added digitally? I mean, nowadays it's just impossible to know what's real or and what's not real. And I'm thinking, I'm taking this even further. Even if I was with them on the ship and I was recording everything and then I would share that with you, how do we know this is really an extraterrestrial ship? How do we know it's not some, some sort of a Earth technology that we have developed? Some sort of a secret space program? How do you know? And even if you accept, okay, this is an extraterrestrial spacecraft and these people are extraterrestrials, how do you trust their agenda? How do you know their intentions? How do you know they say who they say they are? They could be, they are saying they are from Pleiades. How do you know they are not from Arcturus? How do you know how this and how do you know it's never ending? It's never ending. So in the end, you will never know. 
and in the end it's for you to decide based on the information based on the information because in fact how do you trust anyone out there with the information forget extraterrestrial or not the extraterrestrial how do you know anything about anything how do you know the purpose and the agenda of anybody truly it's not to be known it's impossible to know so in the end all you have is the information and your own intuition about this now going back to seeing our communication our typing there was actually uh, there was actually a person at the finnish conference here when we, we did the conference here in finland uh, a year ago with robert matthias was attending as well as as a translator and at some point the the organizer of the conference came to our table and he actually saw us chat with aneka because aneka was actually live online at that time answering people's questions from the room from that conference it was the first time ever we did this this way and he was helping matthias with the translation so he could actually see the screen and he saw the interactions and all that you can see in the video that i will also link in the description box in the video finish conference and now one of the questions from the audience at that time was actually how do you how do you enter into our internet communication so since this video is about typewriting and writing and online communication i'm going to include that here her answer so you can have a fuller understanding of how this connection is done so this is what she said quick answer that athena svaru gave at the finnish conference we have an electrical converter to pass our electric grid nomenclature to a human one, to feed replicated or original examples of your digital computers. Long-range internet access, like from Andromedan Viera. Then the internet signal is passed by wire to a special router we made that translates it to muon communication method. Then it goes to a special human-made satellite that translates muon back to digital and from there into a federation-controlled server on the surface of the planet, under the control of certain governments that are complicit with the federation, and from there into the regular internet. Short-range internet from a starship, like above, signal is passed directly to a human-made satellite, and then to Federation service on the surface, and then into the regular internet. So that's that. More could be said. More could be said on any type of subject, but let's continue on. Thank you very much. I hope your understanding grew a little bit about this communication and why it's done this way, etc. Thank you and until the next time. Bye bye.